Hey guys, it's your girl Erica Elise and today I'm back with another video. So it had been requested that I do a full on blending tutorial on how I like pack on the eyeshadows and actually get this full blown out look. And in the process I decided to do a Mardi Gras themed look just in time for the holiday that's coming up. And in the spirit of Mardi Gras and supporting everything New Orleans, I went in with my matte book by the Crayon Case from Supa herself. And I love the way this look turned out. So if you all are interested in how I got this look, then just keep on watching. Okay, so as you all know, I always start with my eyebrows first. So before I do any type of like eye look period, I always go in with an eyeshadow primer first. This is the Urban Decay um, Primer Potion. And I put that all over my lid and work it up into my eyebrows. And I always suggest that people use a eyeshadow primer because um, in the event that you're working with all these like colorful shadows and everything like that, it helps like prevent the staining a little bit. And then for me, since I have oily eyelids, I'm not sure about everybody else, but I find that this actually helps keep my um, eyeshadow products in place. And it also helps stop the creasing. So I'll just take it with the paddle. And then I'm just going to take my fingers and just pat it all in. Pat it all up in my eyebrows. I'm trying out my DSLR camera because I hardly ever use it. I'm going to figure it out though. I'm going to figure this camera out. I'm determined. Alright, and then uh, one of my typical favorites the Anastasia um, Brow Wiz in the shade Dark Brown. And then we're just going to start filling in those brows. For eyeshadow, like actual bases, which you'll use to actually put your shadows on, I always recommend the P. Louise bases. However, since I'm doing such a bright and colorful look, I never, ever, 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 ever recommend any of y'all beautiful black girls out there to use like a extremely light shade like I'm about to go in with today. I absolutely hate seeing the super white, like, outline it's it looks terrible in y'all flash pictures and everything like that if ain't nobody told you i'm so sorry nobody care about you okay so for this one time only that i'm using these bright shadows my key is using a bright base and i'm going to use the shade rumor two so this one i'm actually going to go ahead and Oh boy, I'm going to clean up my brows with this. This is going to look extremely white on camera, but this is the only time I will ever use anything this bright in life to clean up my eyebrows. And then for my eyebrow, or for the bases, period, I always use the Morphe M224. It's just a flat type of situation here. And then what I'll do is I'll coat both sides of the brush like so. And then we're going to get to carving out these brows. Let me get up. Now for this, you could also use concealer, but I, um, if I'm going to use concealer, I always use the LA Girl Cosmetics one. I feel like that one absolutely like adheres shadows the best. So for the sake of making sure I'm using brushes that are easily acceptable, because usually what I would use is a Real Techniques concealer brush, and these are really hard to come by. These usually only come out around the holidays, and they always come in a four set, and they usually have different colors. But they always redesign them every single year. But if you can find them, I highly suggest going rummaging through Marshalls. And you could probably come across those brushes. So, to keep this, you know, 
buyer friendly I guess I've got to take the Morphe M173 it's a bullet brush it's pretty dense I mean it's not as dense as the real technique brushes but it does still get like the equivalent of the job done and the base that I have on the back of my hand here I'm just gonna dip it in or dip the brush in and I'm just gonna start working that all over my lids and even then I'm still using like light bouncing motions to put this product on because the key to having a flawless base when you're working with colorful eyeshadows is to make sure that your product is becoming tacky that way it holds on to your shadows and then you want to be really careful not to like drown your brush in this stuff because it gets like really your brush gets really like full of product and then it becomes really hard to blend your base out so it kind of comes out kind of patchy and you want a smooth looking base I always bring mine like way in on my nose that way when I blend my foundation in, I'm not confused as to where to not hit my eyeshadows and make sure you don't have any creases because when you put them shadows on, it's going to look like you just got all the creases in the world. Today, I'm going to take my The Matte Book by um, The Crayon Case. And then the first shade I'm going to go in with is this purple right here. And for blending brushes, the first one I typically always go in with first is my Morphe E27. It's like a um, just a regular type of blending brush. This is the number one blending brush I swear by. So what and I always do is I don't dig but I like make sure I'm coating my brush with some of this shadow that I'm trying to go in there with. This one does have like a good decent amount of kickback on it. Why have I never used this palette? I mean I've used it but like barely. All right and so for that very first shadow I never tap the brush. Never tap it. And then me personally, I never set my eyeshadow base with powder at all. I feel like that's what the eyeshadows are for. They're, it's like it's like if I were to go in with a concealer under my eyes and use an eyeshadow to set that all in place. So I'm going to make sure I don't have any creases. And like I said, we're just going to go ahead and just go right in with it. So for looking for your crease, what I do is I'll just look straight forward. Poke myself in the eye just a little bit. And then, boom, that's where your crease is. And then, this, um, me personally, I like to go from the darkest color and work my way up to the lightest. There are occasions where I'll do it in the other order, but this is just like, the bombest way in my opinion to get that perfect blend and I'm just gonna tap this all into that crease area At least I come out real pigmented on this camera. I'm going to give it just props. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye. And then, um, what I always swear by is the, uh, like these makeup brush sponge cleaners. And I just give it like a good swirl. Get all that. And see, it's like there's no purple staining. Like, nothing. After you use one of these. I got mine from Walgreens. This was like six bucks. I highly recommend everybody out there get one. So to keep this little, I guess I'm going to do like a Mardi Gras type of thing. And super nail from uh, Nolan's anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to take uh, this green right here on this same Morphe E2, uh, E27. And that is the number one secret 
of my eyeshadow looks I don't go in with 17 different brushes since I will use two to three maximum period because I ain't got time to keep cleaning 17 different eyeshadow brushes every time I'm trying to do my makeup that is ridiculous so I'm going to do that same technique where I'm just like dumping or just coating my brush I'm not going to tap it and then what I'm going to do is where that purple ended I'm going to start tapping the green on I'm not ready to start the um, blending motions just yet and this palette I kind of forget how it like performs anyway so we're just going to do this like by ear Yeah, it's like not like blending together off that, which I mean, this, this palette does like blend very well, but like most shadows when I'm doing this technique, they, they already start to kind of like come together a little bit, but the, that, I'm not complaining. And it gives me more of a reason to actually show y'all how I go about my blending process. Alright, so you see now I have like this whole lot. A Morphe M443 brush. It's kind of like a smaller type of dome brush. I'm going to take that, I'm going to coat it in this same green shade here. That's what I'm going to type, uh, tap it, excuse me, tap it just a little bit. And then this is where I start the small circular motions. So literally just trying to get these shadows to work together here. Like you don't want to give it too much force where you're just like literally going like this. You just want to barely tap it and just go in small little motions here until all this is just like you see how it's finally starting to come together right in there. That's the type of look you want to go for today. And so since I'm starting to lose just a little bit of that purple, I'm going to um, clean this E27 brush off. Go back into that first purple shade there. Give it a tap and I'm going to just start dusting right where that blend is. Sometimes you have to alternate between the two shadows in order for you to get that blend, sis, and it is all good.
right, so I already cleaned off my um, E27 brush. So what I'm going to do now, I couldn't decide which one of these last two green shades I'm going to use here, but I guess I'll just take like a little mixture of the two. This one, I'm more so focused on this top one right here because I don't want it to be like any darker than what it is. It came out a pretty decent color. Huh. We're going to give us a little bit more of them too. All right, and then this one, I'm going to give this last shadow a light tap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus it where that green shade ended all in this little white area because I am not walking out nowhere with this super white line up underneath my brows. So what I start doing is I hold my brush kind of like this. That way I have some type of motion to do or some type of freedom to do motions like this all over this um, last shade to blend this out. And then you want to be very light handed with it too. I'm trying to cover up this last little bit of this white A base that I possibly can. I got a little bit of my brows there. It's all good. I'm going to dust it off. Honey, these shades is pigmented. So I'm going to give you a little bit more of that lighter green mixed with that darker green. And then I'm going to tap this one and then I'm going to start the circular motions again. And you see that little gradient blend there? Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm trying to put y'all on. I'm trying to put y'all on. Okay, we're going to tag this other eye and I will be right back. Alright, so now that we're done blending our lives away, it's time to cut that crease. So I'm going to take that same Morphe, um, what is this, the 224 brush. And then the P. Louise base, I might just have to get me just a little bit more of that because this crease needs to be opaque. Oh no, I dropped it in the shadow. I'm just going to take me some more of that base. And then for this technique here, because I really don't like having to use makeup remover to get a clean cut because I find that um, usually I... I don't know about everybody else, but I never get my eyelids dry enough after using makeup remover first and then putting the um, base back on. And, it, and then after a while, it starts breaking up because of all the um, makeup remover product that's still left on my eyelid because I can never get all of it off. So what I'm going to do is, on um, that same technique I did to clean up underneath my brows, going to coat both sides of that brush. And then what I do is I tap it right up in there. Let's do like a two-thirds type of thing. And I'm going to tap a good amount right in the center of my lid. I'm going to look up and then look all over the place. And then, boom, I got a little stencil for me to start cutting this crease. And so I'm going to coat my brush again. And then I'm going to start stamping around. The key is to make sure that your brush is super flat. So that way you always get a clean cut. And that is my favorite technique to use, especially when I have people with like basically no eyelids. Sis, I'm going to create you an eyelid today because, look, everybody deserves to be able to cut their crease with no issues. And flip it over to the other side and start patting this everywhere. Coat both sides of that brush again.
And then what I do is when I'm getting towards like the end here, I just kind of lightly tap this out. So that way I can get like a really clean blend going into my darker shades there at the um, end of my cut. You want to make sure you have no creases. And then just tap this in until it starts getting a little tacky. Do y'all hear that? That means it's sticky. Okay, so now that we have these creases cut and ready to go, I'm going to go back into that matte book and then I'm going to take this this lighter purple right here. I already cleaned out this E27 brush and then I'm just going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to dig in it. We're going to coat it. And then what I like to do after I've cut my crease so that way even all this looks blended together, right here where it's ended, um, you kind of see I've got like little just not smooth looking marks here. So what I'll do instead of me taking that same dark purple shade, I'll take one that's just slightly lighter than that. I'm going to tap this one just a tiny bit and then I'm going to start tapping this right on the ends of where the two shadows meet. I feel like it makes a better gradient effect versus me going like, especially since I'm not using like um, straight matte shadows on my eyelid. And then we're gonna take that like just at the very end of it. And I might work it in just a little bit. And then what I like to do after that is I'll do a slight back and forth motions with it. And so like I've lost just a little bit of that dark purple. I'm going to focus that dark purple right on the outside of it versus me trying to drag it all the way in. So we're going to dip back into that deep purple there and tap, 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 tap. And then small circular motions again. I always raise my eyebrows. This is probably terrible for me in the long run, but if it helps get the job done, it's going to get raised today. And I'm just alternating back and forth between those two purples until I get a good blend. This camera is like telling on me. Like, I see it's not blended all the way. I'm trying here. And to keep up with this Mardi Gras theme, I'm going to take a Morphe M167. It's another flat brush. And I'm going to take the shade Nubia up here in the corner. It's kind of like if... Um, Trophy Wife by Fenty Beauty made an eyeshadow. That's basically what this is. <coughs> and then I'm gonna take my um, 224 and tap out those creases I have there. All right, and then what I always want to um, emphasize is there's really no like right or wrong way to put on shimmer shadows. When I'm working with wet bases like this, I always put them on dry. But if I would have set it with like a um, nude colored shadow first, I would have wet my brush and gave it that real wet metallic look. So since I didn't do that, we're just going to pat this on. Either that or if I didn't have my nails, then I would have used my fingers too. That's always a great option when working with um, shimmery shadows. And then once I'm getting towards the end right here, I'm going to tap it in because I don't want to mess up my blend there. Just going to tap it right where the two shadows start to meet. And then just keep working this in.
all right so i was having a really hard time like trying to figure out what golds i wanted to use for this so we just gonna wing it i guess so i have a j larue um cosmetics uh pigment here and this one the letters and like the little name tag came off but this one is in the shade lemonade and it's basically like this basically like the same as this Nubia shade I just went in with but this one's just got like that ooh, like all that sparkling and bedazzling stuff going on with it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just dip that brush I don't want to like tip the pigment over because this stuff is so messy it's gonna fall literally everywhere and then once I get a good like amount on my brush we're gonna be very careful with her because she's messy I'm gonna tap this in right on top of all that gold I just placed This camera is not doing us any justice, but it's like, yo, she's sparkling. I see her. All right. So I figured I'd go ahead and do my foundation off camera because it's like always pretty much the same thing. And so, um, yeah, I did go in with eyeliner. Uh, for eyeliner today, I almost forgot to tell y'all. I went in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Eyeliner. Um, I don't know if this is matte or waterproof, but it is pretty decent with the felt tip liner on it. So for concealer today, I'm going to go in with the Makeup Revolution. But today I'm going to go in with the shade 12.5 because 12 has just been super white on me. And then for contour, I'm going to take the Juvia's Place Concealer in the shade 5. So we're going to do the usual. And right where my um, eyeliner is, that's where I'm going to take this concealer. concealer up just a little notch I'm going to take my elf hydrating concealer in the shade tan sand and I'm going to be very light-handed with this because I don't want a super like bright under eye
I'm going to take my Laura Mercier powder and I'm going to start setting all of the um, highlighted areas on my face. This camera died in the middle of me putting on my powder, but I did let that bake for a hot little minute. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Anastasia um, contour palette and I'm going to take that deep shade up in there and I'm going to start snatching this face just a little more. Alrighty, then for bronzer today, I'm going to take the Fenty Beauty Coco Naughty Bronzer. So for underneath my eyes, I like to take my Morphe M169. It's a really small like blending brush. And I'm going to dip that into the um, deep purple back in this matte book pa palette. And then what I do is I just do this like little slight back and forth motion. And then the darker shades, I always focus them right on my lashes. I'm going to take that dark green first and then just overlap that right on top of that purple. All right, and then after that, I'm gonna take the combination of the other two green shadows right there. And then put that right on top of that last little green shade. This one, I'm gonna tap that one because I did just pick up a lot of that. For blush, I'm actually going to take a shadow today. Um, I'm going to go in with the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. And I'm going to, I'm going to dip in that orange up there. Make sure I really tap this out because this one is pigmented. And we're going to tap that. put it on my nose so for highlight today I'm gonna take my Fenty Beauty highlight in the shade trophy wave she is gold as I'll get out I'm gonna take that on a Morphe Y14 and I'm gonna drown in this highlighter today I don't care it's a festival look anyway y'all want to be seen in the dark while y'all out there catching them beads for me
For setting spray, I'm going to take my Beauty Creations Peach Setting Spray. I'm going to drown in this because it smells delicious. Make sure we drying this out. All right, I'm gonna do my lashes and mascara off camera and then I will be right back. Okay, so for the sake of the video, because I know it's gonna be kind of long, I went on ahead and did my lips too. For lips today, I went in with the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in the shade BFF3. And then for my gloss, I went in with the Milani uh, Keep It Full Lip Gloss in the shade Gold Dust. My lashes for today are from J Yay Lord Cosmetics in the style 1990. And then this is the final look. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you all that are attending Mardi Gras this year have so much fun. This is just an idea for the weekend. Try to get y'all lit and just staring at all throughout the parade this weekend. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.